Welcome to the talk show, The Power of Women in Business, the show for international business women to get inspired with best practices and insights on how to scale up your business internationally. Your host is Tineke Rensen from Holland. She is well known for supporting female business owners to expand their business massively and internationally. Tineke is an international business expert for 28 years and is the author of the book, Maximum Business Growth for Women. It is time that women step up and create bigger businesses so that women can make a bigger impact in the world. Enjoy this powerful show as Tineke Rensen and her guest expert combine their brilliance in business to help you take your business to the next level. So hi there, everybody. Here's the next episode of The Power of Women in Business. And I'm very excited you're all here today and watching me introducing this very special guest uh, to you, Naima Singletary. Hi, Naima. Welcome. How are you? So how, how, how are you, uh, Naima? <laughs> I'm well. I'm delighted to be here. I'm really grateful you invited me. Thank you. Okay, good. So um, you are working very internationally. Um, so I'm going to ask you some questions because I know you have a lot to share with our viewers. So let's dive into it. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, good. I know you have just moved from the States to Europe and you live in Paris now. So right. can you tell us why you made that decision and also how you are starting your business uh, evolving and developing in Europe? Yeah. So um, uh, just quickly about why I chose to move, my soul wanted to be there. I had spent some time there before in my travels and business meetings and my soul wanted to move there. Now, as far as what I think would be valuable to your listeners is um, you said, what has it been like with the transition? Was that what you asked me? Yeah, and how do you start your business uh, uh, transporting it from the U.S. to Europe? Yes. So obviously the legal stuff, I want everybody to know the legal stuff, obviously you want to get with a local attorney, right? So whether you're moving to Budapest or to Hong Kong, you want to speak with a local attorney to help you with getting things organized for the city that you're going to be living in, the city, country that you're going to be living in. As far as the actual connection with people and clients and alliances and partners, etc., it is the old game of going out and meeting people and shaking hands and belly to belly. So there's different ways of doing this. Um, you, you know, looking at your personality type, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, right? So if you're an introverted person, obviously it might be a little bit more uncomfortable for you to go to events and just walk up to people like an extroverted person would do. Yeah. So I'd say if you're more of an introverted person, you want to use these beautiful free online tools that we all have access to. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. When I moved, when I, before I even moved to Paris, when I was moving around, I was still in Italy and spending a lot of time in California. I would get on Instagram and I still do this. This is not, you know, you can do this forever. I would go on Instagram, I would go on Facebook and I would go on LinkedIn and I would search by city. You can go onto Facebook and search my Facebook friends in Budapest, my Facebook friends in San Francisco, my favorite, right? Then on LinkedIn, you can go onto LinkedIn and search your contacts by city, by country, you can search by your first contacts, your second contacts. And then if you don't have a large social media following, start looking for uh, industries by city. So let's say you work in sales and leadership. You will go on to Google or right, like try all of these, right? But you could go into LinkedIn or Google or any of these social media sites and type um, uh, leadership consultants or leadership in London, wherever city that you're in. And that's a great way. You start reaching out to people, you read people's profiles, see which ones you resonate with, send them a message and say, hey, my name is Naima. I live in Paris, so I'm moving to Paris. Your profile resonates with what it is that I do. I'd love to have a conversation to see how we can collaborate, how I can support you, this kind of a thing, right? So that's the online way, and all of us can do that. Now, if you're more of an extroverted person, oh my God, you go into Meetup, <laughs> Eventbrite, Google, you look for events that are relevant to your yeah. industry or that parallel your industry. You see which ones light you up, check your calendar, and you show up. You show up <laughs> ready to play. You show up ready to help people. You show up ready to have conversations that are interesting or you're interested in other people. 
and then have an idea of what it is that you're looking for. Like if you're looking to have your own event and partner with people, go to the event with that in mind. Like, okay, I'm looking for a partner. I'm going to have conversations with people and see where there might be alignment and invite them to have a conversation with you. So this is just the beginning of getting to know people anywhere in the world. <laughs> Global is easy. Global is easy. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is easy nowadays with all the online uh, communities and, and social media things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Thank you. So, so that's that's what you. How how long have you been in uh, Paris now? When did you so move? I started rooting in Paris. What was this about three months ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had been back and forth in and out of Paris, but really started rooting myself there about three months ago. And you already now planning events? Yeah, I actually had an event in Paris like a month after I was there. Wow. And this is the power of leveraging these tools, going to events, going online, using social media tools to have events where people in the city can see your event. So there's a way to do this. So for you, doing business internationally, it's not possible without online. You know, I never even thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to. Like, why no. even consider that? You yeah, know, exactly. use the tools, they're free. Everybody has access. Use the tools. You know, there, there's still the old-fashioned ways. The, th the ways that work well, uh, too, is go to the embassy, uh, go to the chamber of commerce. And those are the, are the, are the things that uh, traditional entrepreneurs who don't know so much about on online will still do. But I love yeah. your approach. Um, so to build your network fast, you would say is... Check online, visit uh, networks, and connect with real people. I'd say the fastest way to build a network is to tap into existing networks. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise, you're dealing with person by person by person. Yeah. Right? So this is a strategic way of thinking when you're building a business. Mm -hmm. So, like, you have a network, right? Powerful businesswomen. So mm -hmm. if I come to one of your events in uh, Amsterdam or wherever it's going to be, all of a sudden, here are... 20 women in this room mm -hmm. versus if I'm going online meeting people individually, it's going to take me a lot longer. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking for speed, I want to tap into existing networks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ex ex exactly. So um, I realized that I still need to introduce you to our people. Uh, <laughs> We we you, you, we know each other, so for us right. it's, it's, it's that common. But I will do that because then people will understand what you do and what you want to be for women in business uh, in particular. All right? Sure. So in 2008, Naima moved to a city where she knew no one, built a fashion marketing company from the ground up and sold it four years later. She then went to build a multiple six-figure coaching business online in under three years. So it's really fast. Today, multiple six-figure power and money coach Naima Singletary helps businesswomen who have always been different to declare their uniqueness, step into their power, and make more money and impact than ever before. Now, why have you chosen to work with women, Naima? It has been, it's a natural thing. It's not like I said, oh, women, right? Um, it's a natural thing. People, you know when it's somebody, you know, a group that you're meant to work with, you just know it. So. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and you, um, you want to work with powerful women. So, what to you uh, is an unusual powerful woman yeah so i like this question because it helps to differentiate and what is a i find to be very difficult in the entrepreneurial space is because we have freedom like freedom sounds sexy but freedom is actually very terrifying to most people mm -hmm. because we get to choose everything and as entrepreneurs there are decisions to make every day and that can be very scary when it's time for you to make a decision, particularly from a soul level, a decision that's not very popular, a decision that's not very traditional. And so what's happened for me over the years, as you just read my bio, I've been in the, an entrepreneur for years. So I've dealt with a lot of different personalities, industries, cities, countries. And so in that, like your viewers, they're going to get to know themselves in the process. Mm -hmm. And we change over the years. 
And so what I started to find over and over and over again, and this has been going on for years, I just started to really pay attention to it more when I came into the coaching space because the coaching space demands transparency. It demands authenticity. Like when you're in so many other industries, you can pretend, you can be fake, you can, you know, lie a lot and get away with it. But in the coaching industry, it demands transparency because the sheer nature of it is about transformation and human people, like people being honest about themselves and who they are. And so what I started to find was where I would have the greatest impact in the transformation space is with these women who have always been different in their lives. I never really, the women who were traditional, the women who um, fit in very well, you know, the Miss America types, and I don't mean literally as far as looks, but the one who was like the cheerleader and, you know, she just did the trajectory of, you know, high school, college, got married, had the kids, got the corporate job, had the family, had the two vacations a year with the family. Like those kind of women never got the major transformations with me. And I never enjoyed working with those women the most. And they never enjoyed working with me the most. Mm. The women who got the hugest value and return, who made the most money, who had the most fun, were the women who were bullied as kids, who never fit in, who had difficult paths, who <clears throat> had always sought to create something different in the world, who had always sought to be leaders. These women oftentimes left home when they were young. They, you know, just have very unusual, difficult paths. And these are the women who I've always been able to help in the largest way. And you know what I love about this? I felt such, you know, confirmation. I was, you know, I was telling you I was watching T.D. Jakes last night. And he, he was talking about the Apostle Paul in the Bible. And he was talking about um, how the Apostle Paul was a misfit. And the Apostle Paul wrote like six or seven books in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And he talked about, and he said, he said the Apostle Paul was a misfit. He said, and I like misfits because I'm one of those. Do you know what a misfit is, Tineke? Yeah, somebody who's uh, not fitting into the group. Right. And so T.D. Jake said, I like misfits because that's what I am. And he said, because there's something about a misfit. They have a particular glow over them in the world and they vibrate and now I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember what he said verbatim but he said they have a certain glow over them and they vibrate in the world and bring a value to the world that the world needs I said oh my god <laughs> this was just last night okay so these are the women right and so for your listeners when you start to get honest about who you are and who you can bring the greatest value to Value, not just some value, but the greatest value. You start looking at the personality and style and the attitude of people who you bring the greatest value to and who you enjoy working with. And that's how I got really clear that I'm here to help women who have always been different, who are unusually powerful. Wow. You sound like T.G. Jakes. <laughs> there's, I love that man. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's a few things I heard I, I would like to comment on. Uh, like you said, you really need to be transparent as a coach. I so much agree. But um, I also see that many are not. You know, for example, I'm in business now for 28 years and I work with women to help them scale up and grow their business. But there's so many business coaches who haven't even had a business of their own and helping other people grow their business. In my opinion, that's not possible. But anyway, so, you know, um, not everybody shares the same value in our industry about being transparent and having high standards, I, I think. Um, but yeah, I think you agree uh, with that. Uh, and, and I love what you say about that the women leave their ho home early. I left when I was 17. <laughs> uh, sorry? It's a common thing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, there's, so thank you so much for this uh, explanation. I think we all know now what you consider to be a powerful woman. And I, I totally agree uh, with your uh, explanation. So thank you so much. Um, other thing, what are some of the common problems that unusual powerful women, visionaries, face with being powerful and success, uh, successful in business internationally? And how do they resolve these problems? So what problems do they face and how do they deal with it? Yeah. 
Um, I, I like to replace the word uh, problem with challenge. Yeah. Right. Um, so there are so many. Uh, the biggest one, right? There's internal problems and external challenges. Okay. So I'm going to go with internal because it's most personal. The internal challenges are just really accepting and revering the fact that I am, that she is an unusually powerful woman that's always been different and that that is a very good thing. Mm. Because if she is still feeling like, oh, I don't fit in, nobody's going to embrace me, people are going to reject me, I'm not going to make any money, right? If that's still running her programming, she's just not going to make the impact and the money that she just, you know, Mm. has such a strong desire and is meant to have in her life. So that's an internal challenge. The external challenge is learning how to get along and be effective in her business with all the normal people. (laughs) (laughs) Right? And then learning how to choose people that are going to be good fits for making her vision come to life Mm -hmm. because she's so different. She's unusually powerful. She doesn't see things the way everybody else sees them. You know, for those who are um, Harry Potter fans, are you a Harry Potter fan? Yeah, I am. You know, they talk about the muggles, right? And then they talk about the us, right? The muggles are the normal people in the world. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's us, the women who are, have always been different and are usually powerful. And then we go out in the world, as we are, interacting with these muggles. They don't understand how we talk, how we live. They True. see us as yeah. So then here we are, needing to build a team, right? Hire people. Determine who our clients are. Build alliances, partnerships, vendors, etc. right? And learning how to pick people and also learning how to deal with these normal people because you... You might have a normal person who's a gatekeeper. And how do you communicate with that person so that you get to the person you really want to talk to? Mm-hmm. Right? Or just whatever it takes. You know, so you have somebody, you know, you partner with somebody and they have brought somebody aboard who's a normal person. And then you got to learn how to do this, right? So that's the challenge for us is learning how to communicate well and to be in harmonious, productive relationships so that we get things done. Mm-hmm. With these people who see things very different than us. That's the exter- one of the external challenges. So the internal is really owning and revering and seeing her difference as a good thing. Yep. And the external challenge is learning how to communicate with the outside world in a way that's effective and not harmful. Yeah, and not harmful for you and not harmful for the other people as well. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. And that sounds simple, but... You know, it's, it's such a challenge for us, and it takes practice and years and mentorship and really caring a lot to continue to go along the path of developing oneself so mm-hmm. that we can be a value to ourselves and to others. And do, do you believe that this is what is needed to, to build a huge business or to make a big impact in the world? What? The cult of the, cult the, the This type of woman? Do I think she is necessary to build an effective business? Yes. Well, there's different kinds of personalities and people, right? Yeah. It's not like she's the only personality that can create success. We know that, right? Yeah, okay. So you're not asking me that, are you? No. Okay, what, so you want to rephrase the question? Well, do yeah, I was I was trying to ask, is, is this the only person you think that is needed in the world that can create a big change and difference? But okay, exactly. We agree. No, no, no. And why are these women capable of making a big difference? These specific women, because you know that's that's your mission eh? to help these women to make a big difference. Why? Um, what's so special, and why can they can they do this? Why can they be a big difference? Yeah. See the beauty of this woman. Right? Versus everybody else. Man or woman, keep in mind. I serve women, but this a man can fit this description too. The beauty of this woman is she talks to, she resonates with, she validates and gives permission and gives a place in the world to people who have never fit into the normal box of mm. men. 
Yeah. Okay. So, you know, there are systems of how the world works that have been in line and created centuries ago that millions of people do not fit into. Millions of people. Yeah. There are so many people who don't fit college. They drop out and become highly successful. There are many people who don't have any interest in marriage or giving birth to children, the institution of marriage. There are many people who don't fit into the typical way we are told the way life works. Mm -hmm. And if we were to live in a world where that was the way and the only way, there would be so many people who would be suffering for the rest of their lives. True. Suicide, depression, etc. With these people, men and women, who have always been different, always since they were kids, and who are unusually powerful, when they show up in the world powerfully, and as I said before, really own their difference and revere their difference and see their difference as a good thing, then they give all of us permission. Yeah. They create space. Yeah. Yeah. They give all of us validation, permission, and we start to carve out another world, where, like the Harry Potter world, carve out a world where people like us are welcome and safe and have permission to thrive. So that's the value of having women like you and me in the world. I love that. I really love that. Yeah. And how to deal with rejection and people who don't understand you or people who see things differently. How, how, how to deal with that? Yeah. So the bright side, like, and I love this because it is, it's such a humane thing, is that, first of all, it's painful in the beginning. When, like me, I wasn't aware of this title of un always been different and unusually powerful. I just recently named this. Like, I, I just had a knowing that there was something different about me, but I had never named it, and I had never seen anybody else name it. Mm -hmm. So for a long time, it was just me feeling like, whoa, like being super cautious around people, afraid to really express. And I know this is the reality for a lot of other unusually powerful women who have always been different. And so at first what happens is you just get stung a lot. You feel a lot of pain. Yeah. You wonder, who am I? You know, there's just, just a lot of pain involved. And in that pain and navigating that pain, you know, the good thing that happens is that we become so much more compassionate and sensitive to human beings. Yeah. Because we it felt so much pain. And we've had to forgive so many times. We've made so many mistakes. We've had to learn how to read people. Like, I've had to learn how to read beyond what people say, look beyond what they do, because... So many people are, you know, afraid to express and have been punished because they saw different, thought different, and ended up impacting people in ways they didn't mean to. I've been very guilty of that. And so the you learn, first of all, after the pain, because I think that it's just going to happen, and this is a good thing, that you're going to feel a lot of pain. But then what you start to do is you start to cultivate empathy and compassion, and you start learning how to read people. And so when it comes time to build a business, it comes time to hire people, fire people. When you're in a new country, like if you're doing international business and you go, no matter what um, uh, uh, culture you're in, because you've learned how to read people, you can navigate that foreign country in the way that another person wouldn't be able to. You start to be able to read body language, look at people's tone of voices, see what they really mean. And you actually start to help other people become more self-aware and you learn how to communicate with the person in a way that helps them to see things about themselves or own things about themselves that they couldn't see. So that makes for you being a better partner, a better entrepreneur, a better coach, a better lover, a better CEO, a better salesperson, you know, all that kind of stuff. So those are some of the ways you navigate this being different in the world. Yeah, and that, and that usually happens when you grow older. Yeah, yeah because practice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just live. <laughs> I hope oh, many, many women feel cold to what you say and realize like, wow, this is it. Just like you said, you only realized uh, a, a while ago that this is exactly what was the issue. So thank you so much for expressing all this and sharing this because it's been a journey for you too, I assume. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's a journey for all of us. Yeah. Okay, so is, is there anything you would like to add to this uh, interview? You want people to know about you or about things you're onto? 
I think a great way for a person to start to get to know me beyond this interview would be to go to my LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. If you're on LinkedIn, I mean, if you're not and you're on Facebook, go to my Facebook business page because that's where I'm giving more value in video form, uh, text form. And so if you want to start to learn more about what it's like to navigate I talk about it, navigating the fear of being unusually powerful in a female body and then how to be successful in the, in, in your internal world, but also in your business. That's, that's what they should do. And I know you'll show those, those uh, Facebook and LinkedIn links. Yeah. So for, for everybody who's interested in knowing more about Naima, stay until the end of the video there. We will give uh, her details and you can uh, connect uh, with Naima. So Naima, time flies. You have been sharing so much and so compassionate and passionate. Um, uh, thank you for your time, your effort of giving the most of you. And um, yeah, let's uh, continue connecting. And I hope many people want to connect with you too. Thank you so much for inviting me, Tanika. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Bye-bye.